Let's get underway. So good morning, active traders, and welcome to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast for Saturday, July 29th, 2023. Great to see so many of you here. The markets have been taking off with all the uh, reports out from the government and uh, lots of volatility to work with as well. So it's a real honor to have so many of you here and big, big turnout. Uh, if you do have any tickers of stocks you'd like me to pull up and take a quick look at, I do just a very quick overview and see if it's worth trading, yes or no. <clears throat> and if so, <clears throat> what would be a <clears throat> likely good trading strategy, let me know by posting the ticker right now in the chat room. Oh, thanks, Alan, on the article on Disney. I'm a huge fan of Disney. I think Disney and Apple, two core holdings. So anyway, let's take a look at the markets. Let's get underway. Hey, before we get underway, just a quick note. Um, I do have the live room service here. And one thing that I'm starting to add here is winning alerts of the week on the front of the Day Trading University website. So that gives you a chance to take a look at some of the examples of winning alerts my members got last week. And just short and sweet, I'm just going to do a couple, uh, probably the two best, so you can see a good example of the types of strong charts that we cover in the live room. And of course, the live room uh, is here. I did move that over to my uh, beloved Day Trading University site. It's uh, been dormant for a while as I've been built out Trade Mastery. As we expand operations, we're relaunching our site. So Day Trading University is, is back and we've got lots to play with on that. Lots to learn, right? So again, before you learn from any educator, I think it's a smart idea to make sure that they have tax return proof that they are a real trader, uh, 1099, you know, real tax return proof, uh, and that they've done some amount of trades, right? They did over 124 million uh, just last year alone, which is a lot of order flow. So I've got lots of experience to share. Okay, that's called building credibility the right way, honestly. Okay, I hope. Well, let's get back into it. So let's go ahead and get underway here. S&P did a nice gap up and a sell-off. So that's that's not good for the market. This pattern is what? This particular pattern where something goes up and pulls back and then goes up again or goes down and bounces and usually pulls back down is a mean reversion pivot. So this is a selling pattern. Even though a lot's been in the news lately, it's a, we'll see where things go. The VIX itself, yeah, spinning top too, right, Chris? You're right. Judy said she's been bag holding coin. Well, sorry to hear that. Not good to have. Uh, the dog pound. Now, one thing we're, we'll take a look at that. Yeah, it's still in a downtrend. Now, let's take a okay. Let me take a let's take a quick look at the S and P. Then we'll take a look at the VIX, and then we'll take a look at stock charts for both day and swing trading. So with the s and I said we have a main reversion pivot. That's overall a bearish pattern, okay, despite all the hype in the news lately. So something that's sold down this sharply and then bounced and is holding steady may well keep going down. So unless we're not out of the woods, unless we break the 46.10 or so. So I'd be cautious next week because we're in an indeterminate area. We're not at a new high. We're not testing a new low. We're kind of in the middle. So good time to be more cash than trading aggressively in this current market. If you take a look at the SIBO volatility index, or VIX, you can see too, VIX has been really slammed, right? Coming all the way down here lately, back down to 13, but it's near support, right? So the VIX is near support and it may well spike back up again. Again, this is a mean reversion plus pattern. It's gone past the mean, but it's at a support, near a support level. So the VIX uh, may spike up. The, the right or downer, the thing to make note of is that at the volatility index, the VIX gets over 14 and holds over 14. Pay attention to this and remember what I said, write it down and hold me to it and see how accurate I am. If the VIX stays over 14 for two or more days next week, then we should be out of it, at least really scaling out of equities and into our inverse instruments, okay? Now, if the VIX stays under 14, and especially if it gets down under 12.8 or under support, then absolutely want to go gung-ho on longs and continue as a rally continues. But for now, we're at a kind of a testing point, kind of at the middle of a road here. So we want to be careful this next week. Now, the mystery chart of the week, of course, is NEO. This is one that I've been covering in the live room for members for the last two weeks, and it's worked really well for those of you who traded it. So NEO is one of our favorites uh, for both day and swing trading. NIO, the ticker, and what's not to love about that chart, right? That's the single best chart in the entire stock market, period. Okay, now what else do we have? IonQ, this is another one that I thought might be of interest to us. And what I don't like is what? What's the... What's the <laughs> I'd say it's going up and that's good and lots of green candles that's good but 
what's the fatal flaw? I mean, not fatal flaw, but what's the problem? What's the problem with this chart? Put your glasses on and what's the problem with this chart? Yeah, Mira got it. Chris has it. Yeah, Jack. Yeah, Neil. Hey, I mean, right, Gary. Smart. You guys are smart. Good. Tony's exactly right. Yeah. Candle's getting smaller, right? So then, yeah, you guys got it right. Good job. I'm proud of you guys. You're smart. That's good. I like working with smart people. So uh, so we had large candles on the way up, but they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> Meaning what? The buyers are getting more and more hesitant. So this is usually what happens right before a drop. So not to say we're going to get a huge drop, but you know, we have a doji, meaning uncertainty. Uh, we have a bearish engulfment, which got overcame by the doji, but it's still small candles. I'd be cautious up here until we get at least up over, say, 18.4. So the pattern, how to say, what's a, re, what's a continuation pattern then? What would we want to see to say, hey, we're out of the woods and now it's a good time to buy? What's the one thing you'd want to see on this chart? I like to do interactive training. I used to be a training and development guy for companies like Ford Motor Company. And so I come from a corporate Fortune 500 training and development background. So I like to ask questions, get you guys involved and get you thinking. So it's not just some PowerPoint pitch fest thing like my competitors. But, so what do we want to see? Right, Heidi is it exactly, right? A fellow Vegas fan. Heidi is it, right? And let's see. Yeah, so thanks. Robert's asking about volumes pre-market. Tony's saying too close above the candle. That would be true. Kent's right. It contained pullback with volume showing little supply. Okay. Uh, Ernine's saying, Ernine's saying volume coming in and candles are getting longer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. What we're looking for is larger green candles. And Heidi got it right too. Uh, larger green candles. So we have large candles that are fading fast. And so we stay clear for now. But this is such a strong pattern. You don't want to just throw it away because it may spike up to 22. And then we kind of feel egg on our face if it runs up without us. So I'd want a large green candle, say at least this height, something about yay tall, something that's out of the ordinary range here, something that's larger than the range of these flatter candles. So that's a good example of uh, you know, being a, a market uh, detective or a market, uh, understand the clues in the market and what signals, you know, what's the difference between signal that's tradable that we can potentially make a lot of money with a profitable trade with versus all the noise in the chop that causes stops and and waste the time and money. So uh, you're exactly right. Big candles, good. Small candles, bad. If it cycles back into big green candles, good. If it goes into red, bad, right? So that's good. All right, moving on. I'm not going to spend that much time analyzing all the charts. Let's make it short and sweet. Roku looks fantastic. I like the fact that we have my favorite chart pattern for candles is small followed by large green candle. And trading successfully is all about going into increasing ranges. That means more people are buying on a daily basis, right? So that means it's good. If less people are buying, that's bad. If more people are buying, that's great. So more people are buying this top green candle. We have small candle, and like a small, medium, large, right? Teeny candle there, then a medium candle right to the left of the cursor, and then a large candle just yesterday. So that's a the small, small followed by a large candle. You go long above the high of that, that's usually a good pattern. So Roku looks fantastic. STLA, also a good chart. This is a nice steady uptrender and no harm, no foul with this thing until it gets over, say, 20.8, 21. So, again, this is a good example of what I call an acceleration ramp. An accelerating stock, an accelerating ramp is where you have a steady uptrend that then kind of hockey sticks into a sharper 45 degree angle, Mars, their best uptrend pattern, and it keeps going up here. So, an outstanding chart. Okay, now here's some charts that you guys had asked about. And let me know if you have any others you'd like me to look at and we will pull them up. So AMD, that's a terrible chart to trade because it's up and down and there's no continuity. You get, I mean, how could you possibly trade that? Uh, riddle me this. How could you possibly trade that without getting stopped out? I mean, it would be very, very difficult to. So I wouldn't trade that. See, I like to trade charts that are easy. Yeah. The older I get, the more I like to keep things simple, direct, and consistent. Just like people. This chart is terrible and it's awful and we get stopped out. I mean, how could you, how, I mean, seriously, how could you enter it? and then make money with and you'd have to be lucky and we're not into luck we're into skill and professional chart patterns at work so that would be a no i was at the eye doctor yesterday right and they're doing all the eye tests one or two one or two this now would you a be more likely to win trading this chart or b more likely to lose i would say i humbly submit lose see i like charts that go like this 
Because see, they're easy. And I like to keep things easy for my traders in my live trading room, right? Now, if you do not yet have a membership, you might want to join, and I guarantee you're, you're, uh, that you're um, more than satisfied. Uh, instead of doing trial memberships, I'll just have you join, and if you don't like it, I'll give you money back, right? 100% of your money back if you quit within two weeks. So two weeks is more than enough time to learn uh, and see for yourself, you know, why so many hundreds of traders are members, uh, you know, why it's popular. And if you, if you don't want it, ask for a refund, and no harm, no foul. Just hit the refund button, you get, you get your money back. And we still part as friends. Um, but if you want to join and stay, you might want to, you could upgrade later to annual or whatnot. But anyway, that's it's a good room. I stand by it. I've been running it since the year 2000. So 20, we're on our 23rd year. That's what I say, crushing Wall Street, right? Again, these are the kind of charts that, these are a couple of example of alerts. I covered Neo back on the 24th. I said to go long at 1120 early in the morning. Before it got there, you know, long before 930, I give people these specific entry prices to use before the opening bell, you know, so at 8.30, nine, well, at 9 o'clock, now we're starting at 9, uh, starting half an hour before the bell, you get all the specific entries, okay, and DWAC, another one, I call it at 17.2, this is one, one of my brilliant traders, uh, Mick, had uh, mentioned this one, I believe, uh, and sure enough, it nailed it, and we worked out good, so, good stuff, all right, anyway, back to, back to our regular scheduled program, let's take a look at our charts here. Okay, so we said that Bitcoin stocks are uncertain right now, right? They're kind of up and down. Marathon's a good one, Coinbase another one, but they're kind of, they, they, they track similarly, not identically, but Marathon, Coin, Riot, BTBT, BT, up and down, mostly down, so we don't want to trade those. Now, several of you had asked about this one, QS, the ticker, QS. Hmm. I like the volatility, and I guess I'll forgive the pull, the spike in the pullback. So yeah, uh, we'll, we'll forgive this set of data because it's a nice overall uptrend despite this this blip. So despite the flaw, it's still a really good uptrending chart. So I like this one. The only problem is we have all these tails up here, right? These candle tails. Uh, this is called a what's it called? Quiz time. What's it called when you see two candle tails that are straight up right next to each other? That's called a what's that called? A TT, what's that stand for? It's a hint. Yeah, right. Franklin, Thomas, Judy, Sid, right? Yeah, tweezer. It's a tweezer top. So that's bearish, and we don't want to go long until it gets at least, say, 20 cents above that. So 13.7. Not a recommendation, but hit 13.7 on QS with a hard stop at 13.4. That'd be my play. And by the way, I do tell traders specifically where would be a good entry, where to set your initial stop, where to target be, and it's usually right under a whole number, and where would be a scale in or an add-on trade. If it keeps going up for us, how do we double down and position size or scale up? Yeah, QS, how to work. So when I saw KC, hmm, it's okay. I like the fact that it's breaking out to new highs. What I don't like, though, is the, the nature of the breakout is really, uh, it's a shady, it's, a, it's choppy, it's not strong, so... While it's an okay chart, I'd just give it like a maybe a B minus. So there's better charts out there. How about Walmart? Maybe for an investor, not for a trader, it's okay. And Disney doesn't look good yet. So I think two of the strongest charts on our plate right now are Neo and Roku. That's Roku, a very good chart. And here is my favorite chart of the, of the month is NEO. And this is one I've been heavily teaching traders how to trade in the live room the last few weeks. All right, any other charts? What do we have? Let's see. Tom's asking about Carvana. We'd covered that in the room, I think, week before last when did a nice spike. Yeah, it's doing a recovery. I, I still like Carvana for a pivot. Yeah, that's, that's a good one for a pivot. That one will play because it's got lots of range, right? So that's the saving grace. Even though it's a down chart, it's been mo mostly green. We have mostly green after a huge sell-off. Uh, that's often good for a, pit, a bounce. So that's a good pivot chart. Yeah, I like Carvana. That one will play. XLSR. XR Lima, Sierra, Romeo. Not enough range. The trend is okay and not great. But on top of that, the, if that wasn't bad enough, uh, it doesn't have enough range to it. It's only, what, 43 to 44, 45? 
I'm not going to spend $45 a share just to get, you know, a portion of that at profit, you know, well, why am I going to spend 40 bucks a share to get $2? So no, leverage is important. Now, for example, for a lot less, for a third, the price, instead of two or $3, you've got, you know, $5. So a 10 to 15 range, that's a 50% range versus a, a fraction of that. Andy, let's see any great, let's see anything great trade records is swing trade ops. Um, well, yeah, these are all likely good swing trade. Paper trading only ops at new highs. Yeah, I looked at DraftKings earlier. Thanks, Ernie. But I didn't like DraftKings. Oh, let's see why. I just remember I didn't like it. I don't remember why offhand. Yeah, it's kind of choppy down here. The run is good, but the, uh, the two things that are bad about this chart, I like the fact that it's running up. But this is one thing that causes traders a lot of trouble is you have to pay attention to the range of the instrument. It has to have a big like, you know, five or ten dollar range, because usually, you know, as a swing trader, I don't know about y'all, but I get at most 30 to 50 percent of, say, a month range or a 90 day range or whatnot. So uh, half of this range is nothing, right? 30 to 32. That's only a dollar or so. Compared to like Roku, half of that range is. What, 68 to 92. $24, so half of that range is $12. So if you get $8 to $12 on this kind of chart, which is certainly possible, that's a good chart to trade because the range is there. Does that make sense, guys? The, don't, and that's one, one thing that when I spoke at Money Show uh, back in Vegas a few weeks back, and I thank you for all of you who showed up there. It was great to see so many of you and shake hands and get auto, do autographs and all that. Um, when I was a Money Show speaker a few weeks ago, that was what one trader said he remembered he liked best about uh, my teaching is the, the whole p part of range makes a big difference about, you know, the payoff and the odds and uh, whether or not it's worth trading. So that's a very smart idea. All right. From you guys. So thanks. Hey, thanks, Frank. Thanks, Ken. Let's see. AL. I think we're about done. Anyways, I want to say a sincere thanks to all of you for being here. It means a lot to me. I've been doing these since two, well, I've been doing 16 years. So it's been quite a while. The STLA is a good chart. That's another steady uptrender. Ion Q, another good strong one, right? Recent volatility, a recent strength in this one too. It powered on up to new high, despite all these pullback candles or smaller candles. If it does get large candles and spikes up, that'd be a good play as well. All right, traders, well, you guys take care. Hey, Neil saying thanks, got to run grandkids. Yeah, I got to love the kids, right? Anyway, you guys take care, and thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it, and uh, give my room a try if you're not yet a member. Uh, you have my word, and it's guaranteed, too, so no risk, right? It's a, I like to be the kind of person I'd want to do business with, so making sure it's risk-free is uh, cost me nothing if I don't like it is the first step of earning your trust, and second is things like you know showing tax return proof I really trade, and more importantly is showing examples of real alerts that actually worked that people could have made a potentially a, a buku a buku dollars on this on a profitable trade so you, know, you guys take care thanks for being here i appreciate it and i will see you next time be safe and have a uh, and stay out of the heat have a great uh, weekend and i will see you guys next time all right take care best wishes bye for now